a self-existent thing. If something did not emerge out of nothing, then there's only one other possibility, that there is something that has always existed. In other words, nothingness is not the default state of reality. Quote. It is extraordinary that there should exist anything at all. Surely the most natural state of affairs is simply nothing, no universe, no God, nothing. But there is something. Richard Swinburne in Is There a God? 1996 Given that something exists, it either came from nothing or else something has existed from the beginning. The existence of this thing is somehow necessary. It existed without any preceding cause. This, we also find contrary to intuition. It's strange because everything we are familiar with can trace its existence to some earlier cause. Manufactured things are made by people, or by machines that were made by people. Life comes from other life. Things not created by humans or other life, like rivers and mountains are created by natural forces acting on matter. It seems to defy reason for a thing to exist without a cause. And yet, we know the universe exists. The universe either came from some preceding cause, or else the universe has always existed, is self-existent, or self-creating. There is no third option. If the universe is not the end of this causal chain, then something else is. Therefore we must accept some things are self-creating, come out of nothing, or are self-existent. Let's call such a thing causeless. Existing without cause. Take anything that exists, the chair you're sitting in, your conscious thoughts, the Eiffel Tower. For the purposes of the reasoning, it doesn't matter what thing we start with. Given that this thing exists, there are two possibilities, either that thing was caused or it was not caused. If a thing has no cause, then it is causeless. Otherwise, the thing has a cause and its existence is owed to some other thing. If we follow the chain of causality back towards an ultimate root cause, there are three possibilities. 1. First cause, the chain of causality comes to an end in a first cause. 2. Infinite regression, the chain of causality continues forever. 3. Causal loop, the chain of causality forms a closed cycle, or a loop. These represent all possibilities. The trace either ends, a first cause, or it continues forever. If it continues forever it forms an infinite chain that's either open, an infinite regression, or closed, a causal loop. In all three cases we find something that has always existed, either the first cause, the infinite chain itself, or the causal loop itself. This thing, which has always existed, we can describe as causeless. First Cause If when tracing back through the series of causes we happen upon something causeless, then our existence results from a first cause. Leading cosmological theories, such as the Big Bang and Cosmic Inflation posit that the universe is not infinitely old, but rather underwent an abrupt event where it came into existence. That our universe has a point that may be marked as a beginning leaves open the possibility that there is a preceding cause for our universe. Another possibility is that the universe is its own cause, emerging as a random quantum fluctuation allowed by laws of physics. Many religions, speak of the first cause as a divine act of creation. In such a case God would be the first cause. Yet some other non-theistic object could as well be responsible for our existence. If the universe is not eternal, we should look for some reason for the sudden appearance of the universe, to explain how it could arise by itself, be self-existent, or be the product of some prior cause. Infinite regression. If our universe has an eternal history, or if it belongs to a reality having an eternal history, then we exist due to an infinite regression. A number of scientific theories propose that our universe is eternal. Prior to wide acceptance of the Big Bang, the steady state model was popular. 
it proposed that the universe is eternally expanding with new matter perpetually created to fill the void in the newly made space. Since the acceptance of the Big Bang, various new models suppose that the Big Bang is itself part of an eternal succession of Big Bangs. Roger Penrose's conformal cyclic cosmology supposes that the heat death of our universe could appear as a new Big Bang in the next eon. Lee Smolin proposed cosmological natural selection wherein a new universe spawns every time a black hole forms. Accordingly, if the laws mutate, he suggests that universes might even evolve towards having laws that maximize the production of black holes. Sean Carroll notes that the equations of quantum mechanics, unlike those of general relativity, permit physicists to calculate eternally into the past or future. With a theory of quantum gravity, we could in principle predict backwards to times preceding the Big Bang. Quote, the Schrodinger equation has an immediate, profound consequence. Almost all quantum states evolve eternally toward both the past and the future. Unlike classical models such as space-time in general relativity, which can hit singularities beyond which evolution cannot be extended, quantum evolution is very simple. If this setup describes the real world, there is no beginning nor end to time. Sean Carroll in Why Is There Something, Rather Than Nothing? 2018 According to ancient legends, the world rests on the back of a cosmic turtle. When asked what the cosmic turtle rests on, a common response is, it is turtles all the way down, an infinite regression. If an infinite regression is true, there is no ultimate cause. However, we might still look for an ultimate explanation for the chain of causes. Causal loop it might be that our existence is part of an infinite series, but one that repeats forever. If true, we are stuck in a never-ending causal loop. The hypothesized Big Bounce is an example of a cyclic cosmology. In 1922, Alexander Friedman applied Einstein's equations of general relativity to the universe as a whole. He found that for certain values of the density of the universe and the cosmological constant, the universe will expand for a period of time, slow down, and eventually recollapse. In his 1923 book, The World as Space and Time, Friedman speculates that the collapse, or Big Crunch, could rebound, in a big bounce, causing a new Big Bang. The process could repeat forever. The idea of cyclic cosmology has appealed to many scientists, including Georges Lemaitre, Richard Tolman, George Gamo, William Bonnor, Hermann Zanstra, and Robert Dick, among others. Quote, we can now ask ourselves two important questions. Why was our universe in such a highly compressed state, and why did it start expanding? The simplest and mathematically most consistent way of answering these questions would be to say that the big squeeze which took place in the early history of our universe was the result of a collapse which took place at a still earlier era. And that the present expansion is simply an elastic rebound which started as soon as the maximum permissible squeezing density was reached. End quote. George Gamow in The Creation of the Universe, 1952 Cyclical cosmologies, can be found in many religions. For example, there is the concept of the wheel of time in the Dharmic religions. Quote, the most elegant and sublime of these is a representation of the creation of the universe at the beginning of each cosmic cycle, a motif known as the cosmic dance of Shiva. The god, called in this manifestation Nataraja, the dance king, has four hands. In the upper right hand is a drum whose sound is the sound of creation. In the upper left hand is a tongue of flame, a reminder that the universe, now newly created, will billions of years, from now be utterly destroyed. End quote. Carl Sagan in Cosmos, 1980 But cyclic models, lacking observational evidence and theoretical support, remained on the periphery of cosmology. 
In 1998, observations revealed the expansion of the universe was not slowing, but accelerating. This seems to rule out a future collapse. The driver of this acceleration, dark energy, remains little understood. If it is constant, the expansion will continue forever. But in some theories, it varies with time and so a later collapse may be possible. Cyclic models, have seen a revival. In 2001, Justin Horry, Bert Overett, Paul Steinard and Neil Turek proposed the Eekpyrotic Universe. This idea marries string theory and cosmology to give a model where periodic brain collisions trigger cycles of big bangs and big crunches. If our universe is part of a causal loop, no beginning or end is identifiable. But what got it started? Did one of the succession of states spring forth out of nothing, or might the loop have always existed? The nature of uncaused things. Given that reality exists, we know there must be an entity that is causeless. What is it about causeless entities that makes them existent? If a first cause, how did it bring itself into existence? If an infinite regression or causal loop, how did it come into being? Might it exist out of logical necessity? Or is it a result of chance? Or might it exist simply because it can exist, and nothing forbids it? Tracing causes backwards can tell us where the previous state came from, but it won't answer where the chain or loop itself came from. Quote. Some believe that, if all events were caused by earlier events, everything would be explained. That, however, is not so. Even an infinite series of events cannot explain itself. We could ask why this series occurred, rather than some other series, or no series. Derek Parfit in Why Anything. Why This? 2008. What we are looking for is not a cause, but a reason, an explanation. For in the cases of the loops or infinite regression, we can always find an earlier cause, but may never reach a satisfactory reason. Quote. For the question to be properly, fully answered, we need a sufficient reason that has no need of any further reason, a because that doesn't throw up a further why, and this must lie outside the series of contingent things, and must be found in a substance which is the cause of the entire series. It must be something that exists necessarily, carrying the reason for its existence within itself, only that can give us a sufficient reason at which we can stop, having no further why. Question taking us from this being to something else. End quote. Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz in The Principles of Nature and Grace, Based on Reason, 1714. If we seek a final because that puts an end to any further whys, we must find something that we can show must exist. Not only must this thing exist, but we must also show how this thing can account for the reality we experience, only then will we have succeeded in our quest. 